we are welcoming Dr. David Hawkins, author of Why Marriage Counseling Fails. Is the problem the marriage or the counselor? I really wanted to talk to Dr. Hawkins today because marriage and family systems are a huge part of my work and it's a huge part of what our community here cares deeply about. Dr. David Hawkins is a clinical psychologist who has brought healing and restoration to thousands of marriages and individuals since he began his work in 1976. He is passionate about helping couples heal marriage wounds and rediscover deeper connection and intimacy. Yes. He's the founder of the Marriage Recovery Center and a best-selling author of over 30 books, including When Pleasing Others is Hurting You. Yes, I've read that. And When Loving Him is Hurting You and Dealing with the Crazy Makers in Your Life. And I read that one so long ago, it seems, but not that long ago. So we welcome him today to our very, very much needed conversation about marriage. And we're here celebrating moms and mental health. So I can't wait to open this conversation up. I did want to read this from his book. Perhaps you can see that there is no need to minimize problems. Suffering alone and in silence is a choice you make. It's really true that in one way or another, we do all need help. <laughs> Ooh, but first, we must start with the premise that we're all undertrained and ill prepared, feel undeserving, and perhaps the biggest obstacle have no idea how to really access help. It's time for us all to stop hiding in shame, withdrawing in silence, or struggling alone to cope with the immense challenges of love and marriage, arriving at the belief and understanding that we all need help. <sighs> Boy, it's taken me a long time to actually, these are my words, say that out loud, that I need help and it's okay to need help. And admitting that marriage is difficult, well, that's all actually quite freeing. When you stop your isolation and fully understand that marriage itself is difficult, you are in the place to receive help. Welcome to today's Heartlift with Janelle. And today, as I have already told you, Heartlifters, we have Dr. David Hawkins, and we are going to talk all about why marriage counseling fails. It's his newest book. And as I just said to Dr. Hawkins before we began, his book about crazy makers changed my life back in the day. And I just encourage you to get that one as well. But maybe we'll come back and talk about that another time. But today, be good. yes, oh my goodness. We are talking about why marriage counseling fails. Is it the problem of the counselor or the marriage? And I'm going to interject, is it just a system? You know, could it be a church system as well? Uh, mm. that really doesn't allow us to sometimes say we're having problems, but coming from a certified coaching, and I do a lot of marriage and family systems, Dr. Hawkins, this is mm -hmm. near and dear to my heart. And I want, I want to get better too. You know, I do want to get better. So why this book and why right now? Cause you've been in practice. I told everyone, you know, you've had over 30 books long, you've been in practice time. for a moon and a go. Yeah. Now, why now? Well, I mean, the, the why now, who, I, I don't have any fancy answer for you, Janelle, about why <laughs> now, other than I've been at this a long time and everybody is frustrated. Yes. Clients are frustrated. Counselors are frustrated. We're all, the system isn't working. So, you know, the book is, comes right out and says, okay, is it the client? It, it is. Is it the counselor? It is. Is it the system? It is. And so everybody, and marriage is such a complex and difficult thing. And so getting help shouldn't be this hard, but it is, it is. You're, you're working through a maze 
and an amazing number of obstacles. And so, I mean, why now? Because I've been at this for 40 years and I look to my left and right and I see couples still floundering, looking to try to get the best help possible and not getting it. Yeah. And I see counselors trying to do the best work that they can and frankly, not really doing it. So yeah. I, hope, I hope the book dials everybody up and helps us to navigate this maze so that couples and, and the system can work together and really help couples get the help that they need so that they, their relationship can flourish and not flounder. Yeah, and so. as a counselor, coach, whatever you want to call me, mental health practitioner, because <laughs> yeah. uh, I do not have a license. I didn't go that route. I went back and got my degree in my fifties. So, um, I just was a, a journey. It, yeah, I know I'm not done. I can't <laughs> wait to keep going. Uh, but I, I know that I know it's going, this book is going to be my first line when I have an inquiry for an intake for marriage counseling. I'm going to say, well, I, I want you to read this book first, or at least peruse it and yeah. listen to this podcast and assess whether you're ready to do the work that's necessary, uh, because that's something I see on the end of the, the counselor end or the therapist end is that, you know, people don't do the necessary work. And I remember I wanted to share with you and get your, I wanted to get your opinion. I'll be married 38 years this August. Mm, congratulations. And I mean, give God the glory. I know it's so great. <laughs> uh, okay. But when I first got my diamond back in 83, I remember we went to a small church and this woman walked up and she grabbed my hand and she looked at my ring and she went, girl, honey, that just is a symbol of hard work. And I was like, I mean, I was just brand mm. spanking new engaged. I was all in the, got my nails painted. I'm showing my ring. And I thought <laughs> right. deflation right away. Yeah. But of course, 38 years later, she's right. She's right. Right. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's hard work. <laughs> it, it, is. It, it, it really is hard work. I don't think at the beginning, you know, when we say I do and all that good, you know, you, <laughs> you know, all about this, we're, we're, we've got stars in our eyes and love is blind. And so we think it's just, you know, all, all it takes is love. You know, all you got to do is love and oh, kind of just put love. one foot in front of the other and it'll all pan out. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. no, no, it doesn't all pan out. It is mm -hmm. the most difficult thing perhaps mm -hmm. that any of us can do. So yeah. why do you think it's, why, why is that? Like well, on an elemental think, level, why mm -hmm. is that? Just refresh us. Sure. Yeah, because, because, you know, we're, we're all very, 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 that's four varies, human. So mm -hmm. human means, look, yeah. it, 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 when we pull the veil back behind the veil, when we look at really what, what's David Hawkins really like, what's he really yes like to live yeah. with? What's Janelle yeah. really like to live with? What is mm -hmm. Joe? What's Jennifer? What are they really like to live with? I mean, when you sort of take off yeah. the facade oh, yeah. and you look at, you look at the, oh, really he, mm. this person, Joe blame shifts, she mm. withdraws, he, and he gets angry over little trifles. She, yes. she gets snippy anyway. So all these little mm -hmm little things they all add up mm -hmm. and then my goodness and if they don't have a and this is what you do for a living it's what i do for a mm -hmm. living if they don't have a way to metabolize and resolve these these situations if they're not growing together yes then then they're becoming further and further and further apart and by the time they get to you of course there is a massive wall between them they can yes. barely see over the wall to each right. other mm -hmm. and what's and what is in that wall all these hurts and wounds and mm -hmm. and harms done that yes. nobody else can see no, you and, know, and not, a lot of times we don't even know, like if it's a trauma informed wound, it's stuck in the subconscious, it, the amygdala, we don't know either. True. I mean, exactly. Mm -hmm. So we withdraw. So mm -hmm. we, we, we become turtles, we withdraw into our shells, or we, we erupt angrily at some trifle, or we do, you know, we do any, we fight. Let's see, what, what's the, what we all learn here? We fight, we flight, fight, we flight. freeze. Yeah. We and we on. don't. Yeah. 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 And or we, well, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Mm -hmm. So we do any, by the way, any of those things done repeatedly, 
So fighting, of course, done repeatedly causes irreparable damage. It well, does. I don't want to say irreparable. We'll talk about but what it, operation yeah, looks that'll like. That'll be good. But, I'd love to come back to that, actually. Yep, yeah. yep. But if you flight repeatedly, yeah. if you if you freeze repeatedly, just like, okay, I'm just going to go with the flow. I'm going to not say a word here. I, I so much want to say something, but I'm, I'm not repress. going because it won't be handled. I, Mm -hmm. I got, so we, so we repress Walk this stuff. on eggshells, right. There, and there comes, and now the wall gets thicker and bigger. And all the while, remember, all the while we're doing soccer practices and band yes. practices and putting meals on the table. We're doing life. And so I have any number of women, and maybe you've heard this story. I'm sure you've heard the story too, where a woman will come to me after 30 years of marriage and she'll look back and go, I don't, I don't, I don't know how I got here. I yes. mean, I was, I was doing soccer practice and I was supporting his, his business and I was living life and I was going to Christmas celebrations and the kids plays and I was, I was doing life and I didn't know that I was growing more and more and more distant from him. And now I, it's all cumulative. Yeah. And they've all left and the nest both, or they're older the and they're never maybe. home. Right. And, and now she comes to you and to me, or he comes to you or me, and, we, and they say, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how I got here, but we're mm -hmm. in a world of hurt, a world of hurt. Yes. And then yes. you and I are given the insurmountable, <laughs> just about insurmountable. insurmountable task, fix this, mm -hmm. fix this, fix this horrible mess. So yeah. anyway, that's how, we, that's how we get there, Janelle. It's, you know, it's, it's rare that anybody is trying to create damage and harm, even though you hear people say, I, I think they're just trying to. Right. You know. On a rare occasion, there's going to be the issue of domestic abuse or someone who's narcissistic truly, yep. or has a psychological disorder. There will be those cases for sure. But I think most of us, we're talking to, to most of us today, we're just trying to do the very best we can, even though we're exhausted and COVID -ed and yep. all yep. of yep. the above yep. things that have been going on. You know, and yep. so there is just, you know, that, that saying, just don't get on my last little nerve. Well, I'm not even sure we have a last little nerve right now. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty That's thin. Right. And so right. I think they, my experience has been with the couples that if I do or say anything, it's just going to all blow up. And what mm. I hear most of all, you can tell me, and what I think is really a subject that I want you to help us broach today, which is mm -hmm. really not okay. on your suggested you know, <laughs> okay. list. I'll so you can say, shot. oh no, I'm not going there. <laughs> is the couple that says, I don't want to break up my family. Oh. I, and even I can, though it's really yeah. damaging and even sometimes toxic, I don't use that word lightly. Yeah. Um can it be more damaging, you know, to a family system if a couple stays together merely for the children while they're in the home? Well, the, 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 the woman I was talking to you about that, that mm -hmm. looks back after 30 years of marriage or 20 years of marriage or 35 yeah. years, anyway, a, a great number, many years of marriage, she's done soccer practice, she's gone to church, she sings in the choir, she does all these different things. Yes. And all the while, through the power of denial, that's another topic, by the way, but mm -hmm. anyway, through the power oh. of denial, we tell ourselves, it, you know, I can, mm, I can do this. I don't know. It, I can do this. It's, it's not so bad. I can because, I mean, my goodness, I mean, think about the cost here. If I decide to really separate, there's another topic, by the way, separation. Yeah, yeah. And we want to have you back. <laughs> Already. <laughs> the, 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 well, the importance of, I'm, I'm writing more, Janelle, about the power of a temporary separation. Yes. You bring up that word separation. Yes. And people, oh, Panic. No, no, no. Good. I can't. Speak to us, please. Well, the, so women often will come to me and they will think in extreme black and white terms. So they'll, they'll, they'll challenge me. Oh, Dr. Hawkins, so you tell me I have to divorce him. No, I didn't say that. I'm not even using the word. Oh, then I have to, then I have to stay, right? Totally. I have to stay and just put up with it. And that's all. I mean, it's either one or the other, right? Mm -hmm. Either no, or. No, no, it's not either or. No, there are many, 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 many 
many possibles in between. Mm -hmm. And this is revolutionary for a woman to think yeah. like this, like, it is. really, I can, I can, I mean, there are some other possibilities. There are. And before mm -hmm. we even talk about those, <clears throat> I say to her, I want you to back to your point about through the power of denial, she will sit and tell herself it's not so bad yes. while she enables this destructive behavior. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I can put up with his blowing up periodically. I can put up with his drinking or his drug use or his workaholism. Pornography or, or pornography. adultery pornography. or vice versa. Can, yeah, you know, not, we're not being sexist just, here, vice versa, because I have known it, women to do the same. It, so. <laughs> it, exactly. And so I have women and, and so, and I have women come to me and they come to you and they'll say this to me. Well, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm supposed to be long suffering. I'm yes. supposed to just hang in there, mm -hmm. aren't I? And I mean, first Peter says, you know, without a word, you will win them to the Lord. And yes, so I'm supposed just, to just, you know, I know he's got a pornography addiction, but I, mm -hmm. you know, he's told me he will quit. I know okay, he's sorry. using drugs, right. but he's told me he'll quit. He's told me he, yes, mm -hmm. he has to work 75 hours a week, but he's told me he will and so I'm supposed to do this, right? I think particularly right. if I can interject and get your opinion, because yeah, you've been doing this through uh, 40 years. So in, even in that, uh, Dr. Hawkins, I believe you have seen a massive shift, I would think, generationally, mm -hmm. you know, because I know I have three adult children and, you know, there are mm -hmm. times where they're like, we just go to marriage counseling to get a check in to check up, you know, I'm like, oh, bravo. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Like, I'm mm -hmm. so freaking proud of my kids for doing that. Yeah. You know, they're, they're just making sure getting the maintenance, you know, doing that kind of work. But I think that in the past 40 years, especially in my generation of women in the evangelical world, if we want to use yeah. that word, you know, it's kind of has okay. a, a buzzkill on it these days, but <laughs> uh, or a church system or Christians, yeah. however you want to say that, yeah. you yeah. know, there was that big D divorce word that, you know, you just couldn't utter. And there have been such, you know, such reform and change happening, but I know that I, I, my women my age are still stuck there, you know, and so we do feel like mm. we need to stick it out and persevere and we will get our reward in heaven for that. In the meantime, there's a whole lot of unhealthy stuff going on that's impacting the next generation. So, <clears throat> yeah, and more and more, I find myself, Janelle, talking to women and men about that, that what about all the harm that has led up to thoughts mm -hmm. of divorce or yeah. actions toward divorce or the separation? Mm -hmm. What about taking ownership and take responsibility for the damage that's being done that yes. leads one to even think about divorce? Yeah. So back to another topic, yep. you know, the topic of intervention. So yes. if we, if we as clinicians, if we think in terms and we educate people and we say to them, look, I want you to really, really take stock of what's happening. I want mm -hmm. you to really look at what's happening in your marriage, mm -hmm. in your family, in your church, in your, when just good. take stock really and take good. and really think about what's happening. And are you enabling something really destructive to happen? Oh, that's and good. if you don't enable then what does a little intervention look like? What does another level of intervention look like? What is a higher level of interventions? And I don't have to tell you this, That's Janelle, so those, those that are listening, interventions work. They do. Now, do, do they work 100% of the time? Nope. No, but I'm, I'm going to give you a, I'm off on a little bit of a tangent. I love it. This is, I want to, okay. I really hear the cry of so many I, hurting people. I want to so. give you, I want to give you a factoid that might shock you. Okay. Here it is. So in my 40 years of practice, I have never, oh, I already gave you the answer. Here's the question. <laughs> What? <laughs> I already gave you the answer. Oh, Thank no. you. <laughs> I, won't, I won't fail the test. Of a woman who has said, I'm going to pull apart from you, husband, because of XYZ addiction. I'm going to pull. And this woman has said, I don't know. I mean, this is scary to pull apart. So scary. It's scary to do an intervention. And it is, it is, it is, it is. 
Yeah. So now you already know the answer, but here's the question that I, I give to a woman. What percentage do you think, what percentage, when I have walked through with a woman an intervention where she's done something, she's pulled apart for a week, two weeks, mm -hmm. some number, she's pulled apart. What percentage, you already know the answer here, <laughs> what percentage of men have walked away and said, good riddance, mm. glad to be done, don't mm. want to change at all, good, goodbye. Well, does it shock mm. you, Janelle, to hear? I've never, I've never, I, right now in my practice, I have mm -hmm. three, four, five women, and I'm not, I'm not on your broadcast to promote separation. No, we separation. are not, but we are talking about the stuff that's real and so, that's happening. Zero times, hmm. zero times have I seen a man walk away and say, it's okay. I don't, I'm, I'm willing to let go of the family and the marriage and mm -hmm. the estate and the dog yeah. and the cat and the family and the home and the zero, zero. Mm -hmm. So I say that, I say that to women to be encouraging that I know, look, I know, well, I, don't, I actually don't know exactly, but I can imagine how difficult it is for you to think about intervening yes. into this pornography addiction, this drug mm -hmm. addiction, yep. this sex addiction, this, this and that. Anyway, yeah. so just know to, uh, to your listeners, mm -hmm. from my vantage point, interventions are highly, highly effective and so anyway, but you can do many interventions mm -hmm. by saying, look, I'm going to speak about what's going on in my marriage. I'm going to talk about it. Yes. You will not like it, but I'm going to talk. So anyway, yeah. it doesn't have yeah. to be a horrific intervention. It can be a step by step by step process. And that intervention to you, because to me, I, it's almost like an intervention can be a separation. You know, and I remember back in the day, Dr. James Dobson, which many of our listeners won't even remember or know who he is. Um, mm -hmm. But I do remember him even saying that there are times you have to take a six month, nine month time of separation, you know, which was a yeah. gas back in the day. Was, you know, we're talking, Whoa, you know, that's that's just scandalous. But I remember it so clearly. And um, but I think that is yep. that the primary. So two questions here. Fear, the fear of that, is that one of the greatest hindrances? Like for either, because I, I honestly have had husbands whose wives have been, had the affair and done the offense, not just the man. And, but right. today we are talking primarily to women, but um, what does that look like when you tell us to have an intervention? What does that look like? Just maybe a, the first little step for someone who's like right there and they're so afraid, but. Sure. Well, for, uh, Janelle, I, I want to honor the fear. I want, I want them to, that, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's even a step. Yeah. It's a step in the right direction to say to yourself, this is scary. What I try to do is to say your worst fear. Now, remember what he's saying. So he's adding to her fear. because Without a saying, doubt. Because mm -hmm. he is saying, you do that and, and I'll cut you off, you know, baby. <laughs> it'll, it'll never, it won't go well for you. It'll yes. be, you know, if you take a step out, you know, separation always leads to divorce. Oh, and I feel and the shame you, there. Yes. And, and if you do that to me, you know, I'll tell everybody that it was, I'll do, mm. and, and, and so I'll he gives you. all the, I'll guess you will, you will, you will wish you hadn't done it, which mm -hmm. now, what does that tell us? What does that tell a woman? What I wanted to tell the woman is, oh, ah. oh, he's really trying to say he's scared out of his wits. Yes. Now, he's not going to say those words. He's not mm -hmm. going to say, I'm <gasps> afraid. Yeah, I can't be alone. Say, yeah, he's not going to say that stuff, but that's what he's saying. And so then I say to the woman, see, ah, that, that really means you have some leverage here. Leverage isn't a bad thing if you're leveraging mm -hmm. it for a good cause and a good mm -hmm. reason. So yes. Well, I anyway. like to call it agency. Like it's using agency. your autonomy. Sure. It's using yes. your personal agency because so many of our, uh, all of us, not, I don't know all of us, but so many of my clients grew up in a trauma-informed childhood situation yes, where they yes. didn't have any agency. Yes. And so I feel like one of my primary tenets that I try to speak about here in this community is that we now have agency in yeah. all of the right 
wholly healthy ways. I have a voice. I can use my voice and my voice equates value, worth, and dignity. So I love it. Honor yourself by Mm -hmm. using that. Now you couldn't use that. Mm. And maybe you couldn't use that in your fifth year of marriage because you didn't have it yet or your 10th year, Mm -hmm. but you're here with me to get agency so that you can possess a sense of self that stands up for yourself. Right. I think that's so true and so powerful. And that's, that's one of the things we can do. That was one of the things I, that I recommend for counselors is to understand we really have some influence here. We can yes. really help people become courageous to yes. take whatever the next step is. They don't have to take 10 steps. Mm-mm. What's the next best step for you? Mm-hmm. What's the next best? I think it was Gigi Graham or somebody that said mm-hmm. uh, enough light for the next step ahead. Or something. I love that. I call that the flashlight principle. You know, when you have a flashlight, that's just that exactly. small. It's like just shine it on the ground and that'll be all that you it, really it, need. It's the light enough, of your path for that moment. Enough yes. light just for enough. that next step. And then, and then what happens, we see our clients have more and more courage and then, and the more courage they have, the more like, and, and I want to, I want to comment on another, another thing that I notice, Janelle, and it is this women come to me at different stages of clarity. It's really exciting for me. I'll, I'll mm. take, I'm, I'm, I'll work with anybody wherever they are, but That's it's good. really the stages it's, of it's clarity really, in this book. Like how to get those, it is, tell me, I got to know what page you got to get me there. Okay. (laughs) I'll find it and I'll add it in Uh, stages of clarity. That's brilliant. But, but so a woman, it's really exciting for me, doubly exciting for me when a woman comes to me and says, you know what? I'm ready for whatever is next. I am good. I'm, I, I I feel like I can, I'm, I'm going to go home today and I'm, Look, if, if he threatens to do this, that, or the other, I'm I'm okay. I got it. I, I know what I'm doing. Like like and I always kind of go like, wow. <laughs> that, what happened? That's really, yeah, <laughs> yes. you really you well, you know, I've thought it over and where I am mm-hmm. is not okay. And where I want ah. to be is where I want to get to. So mm-hmm. I understand that it's me that has to get there. He's not gonna, he's not gonna lay out the red carpet and say, honey, go mm-hmm. become whoever you need to. That is not happening. 